Good evening, good evening, everyone. My name is Chandra Nicole Gore, and I am a lens of faith. Today on the Let's Talk show, I have none other than B.L. Brown, who is a law enforcement professional that I happen to meet on an author talk show. And so I am extremely glad to have her on today. I can hear her. I can see her. You all just don't know what we went through to make this live happen. How are you, B.L.? Outstanding, outstanding. What a blessing. What a blessing. Thank you for having me. It is a blessing. I'm, I'm here to tell everybody, you know, if you face something hard and you know that it's supposed to happen, just keep doing it. Keep trying. Keep pushing. Don't give up. Keep pressing on because if it's meant to happen, it's going to happen. And I thank God for today because it's happening. <laughs> I want to tell you a little bit about BL real quickly. She has been a law enforcement professional for approximately 20 years, which included community oriented policy, field training officer, detective, senior instructor, and supervisor. She has utilized the knowledge obtained throughout the career, through her career, to teach various classes at both state and regional training academies. She has created training programs for law enforcement agencies involving field training and criminal investigations. Ms. Brown received a bachelor's degree in education from Henderson State University, a master's degree in public administration from Troy University, in addition to criminal justice coursework towards a management certificate. Ms. Brown is passionate about education and criminal justice and works to mill these disciplines to improve the relationship between law enforcement and the citizens they serve. Ms. Brown is also the author of the Justice Academy, What You Should Know. Brownie Bear teaches gun safety and rules of engagement, mending citizen police interactions, which was written to help bridge the gap between law enforcement personnel and the communities we serve. Welcome to the show. How are you? Thank you so much. I'm so excited to be here. I'm glad you're here. So tell us about your day today. Oh, my day was outstanding, as always, as always, uh, uh, molding young minds. <laughs> That's good. That's good. Molding young minds. We, you know, we were briefly talking about this right before the broadcast came on, you know, how um, today's societies of young adults are not physically and mentally tough as they were back in the day. You know, especially um, I was talking to BL just about the training environment, the military training environment, how we get 17, 18, 19 and 20 year olds that's fresh from the home front, fresh off the couch, playing those video games and they're coming into the training environment and they're not as mentally or physically tough as we were back in the day. And so we have some work to do as citizens of the United States of America. We have some work to do here to protect our home fronts first and foremost, and then go out into the school environments, the training environments, the field environments. And that is what BL does on a regular basis. She impacts the world with her talent, with her gift and her skill on a regular basis. So I want to tell you, uh, thank you for your service. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you for your service. So I want to I wanna just get started with this interview. And first and foremost, I, wanted to, I want you to tell the listening audience what you think about gun safety as it relates to suicide. I think gun safety is paramount. Um, when it as it relates to suicide, I think I think first of all, suicide is is something that has to be talked about. Um, suicide suicide prevention is something that has to be talked about. Um, when people have suicidal thoughts, they need to seek help because because what happens is you know that stress, that depression, it continues to build, continues to build. And if you don't have an outlet for that, especially if you if you if you're not talking to someone. Um, it can cause those those feelings to exacerbate, uh, meaning anything, any little small thing could probably set you off to um, to actually uh, uh, attempt. Mm. And I think I think gun safety, when you talk about gun safety, you talk about, you know, people who may be experiencing suicidal thoughts who may be gun owners. Um, and I think I think that safety um, along with suicidal thoughts, I think that has to be something 
uh, that, that's talked about and that supportive people have to get involved. You said something right there. Supportive people have to get involved. Talk about that a little bit. What does supportive people look like? Well, supportive people can be anybody. I mean, you talk about family, uh, trusting people that you trust in, you know, uh, people, the pastor at church, it could be, um, you know, a, a neighbor, it could be anybody that's trusting, uh, somebody that you can confide in. Um, I, I'll say this right here. Um, the whole don't snitch campaign uh, has hurt a lot of people because they feel like, well, I don't really want to tell anybody what's going on with me because I feel like, you know, I'm, I'm kind of snitching, I'm kind of selling out. And so I need to toughen up and take this. But but that's the opposite of what needs to be done. Uh, you need to talk to people. Uh, sometimes that's that's a way to cope. And sometimes we don't we don't actually learn, especially young people haven't learned the coping skills to deal with, you know, the ills of the world. You're absolutely right. Um you know, I really think that they should bring those coping skills and those resiliency skills to the schools. Mm. Because as children, you, you may think your child don't know, but you never know what your child is learning. You never right. know what they're reading. You never know mm -hmm. what's going on because every child this day and age has a cell phone. So mm -hmm. what are they scrolling on the Internet? What are they looking at? Those YouTube videos? Mm -hmm. Let's not go there. Let's not go there. Because I've mm -hmm. had lock a lot of YouTube footage on my own children's devices because of what they're yeah. through and looking at. And so how are they mm -hmm. digesting that? And then when are they going to pull that out of their, their pocket and say, well, I saw on a YouTube video. Let me try this. So right. we have to be careful and we have to be supportive of what our children are learning, what they're mm -hmm. looking at, what's in their eye gate, what's in their ear gate. We have to, be on it as parents, the supportive people in supportive roles, you know, grandma, grandpa, mm -hmm. pastor, the Girl Scout leader, the, right. the coach, the, the football coach. Right. We all have to one team, one fight, you know, and they say it takes a village to raise a it child. Yeah. Does. That still applies to this day. Absolutely. And people don't want to recognize that because they're yeah. so secluded these days. But it mm -hmm. definitely takes a village to raise a child. I definitely believe believe that it's still true today. So I, I want to give you a, a, a short statistic here from every town from for gun safety. Um, it's it's a national website that talks about firearm suicide in the United States of America. And so mm -hmm. it's that claiming the lives of 23,000 Americans every year, including 1,100 children and teenagers, firearm suicide is a significant public health crisis in the U.S. It didn't say it was a small crisis. It didn't just say crisis. It said a significant public health crisis in the U.S. Nearly two thirds of all gun deaths in the U.S. are suicides, resulting in an average of 63 deaths a day. And it, it gets worse. It gets worse from there. What do you think about that very statistics, BL? I think I think it's a silent killer. I think it's a it's a health crisis, but I think it's a silent health crisis. I think there's not enough uh, talk about prevention. There's not enough emphasis put on suicide prevention. There's not enough emphasis put on, like you said, resiliency. Um, students, especially young people, um, you know, depression. You read about uh, kids in depression. Yes, there's some kids that have adult problems of no fault of their own. Yes, you know, and so they're, they're, they're dealing with, you know, what they believe is like the weight of the world, you know, and unfortunately, this society that we live in requires adults, parents to work two, you know, three jobs. So who's raising the kids? Right. <laughs> Instagram, YouTube, you know, um, and so Netflix. And so, that, Netflix. And so, and so yeah. It, and so that's a problem. It is. Uh, we talk about when we talk about resiliency, it's like as a parent, you're working, so you're not really present. Um, and so when kids want, they get. And so nobody's telling them no. And even if you're telling them no, you're not really there to say, hey, no. Um, and so those those skills, they don't learn this. And when they hear no, it's like, oh, come on. You don't mean no. You know, 
And so it it doesn't it doesn't happen. So when when things get hard for them because they're not accustomed to you know dealing with problems and right. people saying no, when things get hard, they just want to quit. And so sometimes quitting looks like suicide. Absolutely. You know, I just want to end it. You're right. You're and I, right. And I give you, I give, you, I give you one more statistic uh, to go along with that is that when you talk about males to fit to to uh, to females. Um, most of the time, especially when you're talking about adolescents, a lot of times females are more apt to to attempt suicide. Mm. Um, but because of the the mode that they use, males are a lot more successful because a lot of your males are going to use firearms, whereas a lot of your females may use something something different, something that that may allow um, intervention, whereas a gunshot. There's, there's not, there's not really that, that opportunity for invention, intervention. So let's talk about this for a second. What world events have captured your eye and caused you to want to spread awareness about gun safety? Well, I live in, in Georgia, and um, around about around 2016, um, I, you know, watching the news. I'm, I'm a news buff, so I, I began to see what appeared to be an abundance of accidental shootings by children. I'm talking about like to toddlers. And so I wanted to learn more about it. And, and I use the website every town as well. Um, and they talk a lot about uh, accidental shootings by children from zero to, um, to 17. They keep those statistics. Um, in 2017, there was a, um, a, uh, a, young, a young child in Fort Valley, Georgia. Uh, who accidentally shot himself. And, um, and so I went to Fort Valley because not because I was trying to sell books, but because I was trying to bring awareness. Uh, and so I, I ended up giving away a lot of my, my books. Brownie Bear Teaches Gun Safety is a children's book that talks about three kids that find a, that find a gun on their way to school. And the bear actually teaches them about the dangers of firearms. And so that book, I just wanted to give it away just so people could understand, you know, hey, it's OK to teach your kids about how dangerous firearms are Absolutely. so that they so that they won't accidentally shoot themselves or someone else. Uh, and so and so I did that to bring awareness. Um, and it, it was just it was just those those incidences. Every time one of those incidents happened, um, it's sad, you know, it's sad. It, it absolutely is. And it, it seemed like two or three years ago, it seemed like every time I would turn on the news, I, there's a mass shooting at a school mm -hmm. and I'm just like sickened by it. And I'm just like, mm -hmm. really, all these children are dying at the hands of their one of their peers. Right. You know, and th at that point, I, I had to really minimize what I looked at on TV, watching the news mm -hmm. and all that. I stopped watching the news because it was so. I felt depression creeping up on right. me just watching the news. And I'm just like, right. this is getting out of hand. You know, mm -hmm. all these school shootings, you got children shooting each other. You got children shooting themselves at home, mm -hmm. mishandling right. firearms. We have to take back our society. We have to right. do better as adults for our children. We, we have to do better. And what does that look like? Well, a lot of adults need to be educated and trained as well right, on right. gun safety because right. some of them don't know. You mm -hmm. know, I, I look back and I think about all those instances where I see people just pointing firearms. They're not aiming. They're just pointing. Right. And then right. they start shooting. Well, where's the trajectory of your bullet going? Right. You know, it's not yeah. going at what you pointing at. Yeah. It's not, you know, and so. That's what I mean by educating adults on how to handle mm -hmm. firearms, how to fire firearms. I'm all with protecting your home front, mm -hmm. but you need to be trained on how to use that firearm too. Right. Trained. Trained right. on how to use it. I think we need to get back to the basics on training and developing and educating one another on gun safety. What right. is gun safety defined as and what do we need to do to stay safe in our own homes as far as gun safety is concerned. But this, this is what I tell people. Um, I, don't, I don't get involved in the gun debate, whether to have or not to have a firearm. But I do say this. If you are protecting your, your home, um, more than likely, 
you're not going to secure that firearm because if that firearm is there for an intruder and you let's say you have a gun lock and so i have an example of a gun lock here all right so let's say you have a gun lock on on your gun now you have to find the key to unlock the firearm to load the firearm to then be ready to protect your home so it's not likely that you're going to have a gun lock all right also if that firearm is to protect your home it's not likely that you're going to have that gun locked up because again you have to find the key unlock the the box or whatever take the gun out load it aim and shoot so what i tell people is the people in your home need to be educated about firearms uh one you need to have a um a good holster uh, i think there was a situation where there was an accidental shooting where there was a lady that had her her firearm in a holster, uh, but it wasn't it wasn't the proper holster. That holster allowed a toddler to still fire the to um, pull the trigger uh, on that firearm. So you need to have your firearm holstered. Um, that's one that's one thing. Uh, there's several types of holsters that you can buy. Those holsters sometimes um, may deter a child from getting a, a hold of your firearm, but everyone in the home needs to be well versed on the firearm uh and and i think that that is where gun safety starts i like that i like that i i didn't even think about that but thank you for that i think you mm -hmm. just me with something right there everyone in the home needs to be educated on the firearm mm -hmm. i need to get your book too by the way <laughs> Okay. okay. I'm gonna get, I'm gonna get one. That's for my son, because okay. my son loves reading it. So I, I, that's gonna be a good way for me to help him. That's gonna okay. be a good way for that. Good. But I like that what you said. Everyone in the home needs to be educated on how to handle the firearm. Correct. You also need to properly holster the firearm because nine times out of 10, if your, your weapon is in your home, is there to protect your home and you're not going to have it locked up all the time. Now, if you right. got several firearms, I'm sure you yeah. don't need all the firearms unlocked, right. You right. Know, but at least one will probably be unlocked if you, you know, protecting right. your home front. So I, I get it. I totally understand. And that mm -hmm. is a very good point that you made right there. So thank you for that. Mm -hmm. I'm going to make sure I write these in the comments. So as a law enforcement professional, how have you impacted your specific community of care, whether it's you going to work every day or you as a detective, a police officer? Tell us about that for a second. Well, I believe I, I'm a police officer who believes in teaching. Um, and so how I impact my community is I teach my community about safety whether it's personal safety, mm -hmm. um, when, you, when you're talking about your home uh, or whether it's, um, you know, making your home safe, making your person safe, um, whatever it is, traveling safe, um, that's, that's what I do. And I try to educate, the books that I write are about educating the public uh, because I don't, I don't think law enforcement should be a secret. Right. You know, there, there are some police officers that say, well, whoa, 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 if you tell people this, then, then we can't do it anymore. Sure you can, but it's just like now people know how to play the game. Right. You know, and so I'm, I'm a I'm a firm believer. You can't win if you don't know the game. <laughs> you know, there's so. like you said in your book, rules of engagement. Right. Exactly. 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 Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. So what training programs do you recommend for people with guns or people that need to react to someone with a gun? Just about every um, reputable gun range has um classes uh every every gun range has a class as a matter of fact i used to work with a young lady um she um she teaches firearm safety i, I believe it's trigger happy firearms mm -hmm. uh if you, if you google trigger happy firearms you, you can find her her name is marshall uh and she does an excellent job it's a uh, it's an all she teaches an all-female class so it's not like you're in class with, with men and, and you feel intimidated. She normally teaches all over the country um, and she does a real good job. But any reputable firearm um, range, fire range, generally uh, gives um, classes. Um, 
defensive tactics, uh, some fire rangers offer those classes. If they don't, then a lot of times they have people that they can recommend. Um, but all defensive tactics people are not created equal. Um, you have a lot of a lot of police officers that you know that's their side job or their side hustle is to to help, especially women. They they want to help women because you know women are more vulnerable. Uh, so you know, or that or there's a sense that women are more vulnerable. And uh, so they're more apt to kind of take a uh, mess, you know, like they don't really know, <laughs> you know, if, you know what I mean? Like, I, I don't really, you don't really know what I'm teaching you is not, you know, you can get this off of YouTube, um, you know, that kind of thing. Uh, so, you know, you just kind of have to be careful of the programs, you know, just like anything else, do your research. But, um, but yeah, fire, and, uh, fire ranges, that's the place I would go to get training. I think that's a good idea as well um, to go to a gun range to, to really get the training that you need. Don't I, I seen some people uh, go on YouTube and try to do it that way. Mm. I mean, no, don't do that. Don't do that. everybody want to retreat yeah. to YouTube, but I'm telling you, I really believe do and strongly encourage you to go to a gun range, a mm. reputable gun range. <laughs> My brother-in-law did YouTube, and I went to shoot with him, and I'm like, man, look, <laughs> let me help you. <laughs> Bless his heart. Bless his heart. I love him. YouTube. <laughs> Everybody going to YouTube for everything. Come yeah. on. Yeah. Yeah. So what steps would you recommend uh, to family members to take if they have a family member that is suicidal and they own a gun? Well, the first thing, uh, if I if I um, know somebody, a family member that's suicidal, is call a suicide prevention hotline. That's the first thing. Um, the second thing I would try to do is try to encourage them to see the importance of maybe locking their weapon up um, and then maybe sharing that key with you. But again, that takes time and that takes a very strong relationship it does. Uh, to be able to do that. Uh, because people, I don't care, male or female, then they're, they're not very um, forthcoming, and they're not very, um, you know, forthcoming with with handing over their their firearms. Because that that's a sense of, you said pride, but you know, it it says it's about control. And so it, once I relinquish my firearms, I, it's like I have no more control. Mm -hmm. I mean, if that makes sense. Like you're bare armed. He, right. You Right, right. I have, I have, I have to. I'm, I'm vulnerable. Right. And now I'm, I'm depending on somebody else to keep me safe. Some, somebody, especially military people who, who that's for four, three, four, however many years, their job has been to keep us safe. And so now you're saying you want me to be vulnerable. Right. Yeah. So I mean, it's, it's difficult, and so it takes time. It takes a lot of uh, encouragement, um, and it, and you have you have to be there, yeah, and and know when to back off, because if you push too far, um, you know they, they'll 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 break that you'll break break that trust. Um, Absolutely, I, yeah. I agree with that. I agree with that. Sometimes we have to tread lightly, and I think it, mm -hmm. it's all about bringing awareness to the fact that you love this family member. Right. You care about this family member. You're showing concern to this family member. Mm -hmm. So maybe they'll think a little bit differently. Mm -hmm. You know, it's all about us trying to drop little nuggets in their mind to make them have a different thought process right. as they're dealing with whatever it is that they're going through. Mm -hmm. And I think the, the best we can do is to be there for them, allow them to vent, talk mm -hmm. to them, check on them, check right. on them regularly if you can. You know, mm -hmm. just to let them know, hey, I'm here. I'm here. I care. Is it anything that I can do for you? I'm here. Mm -hmm. And I have been trying my best to be a great advocate for my family who has been going through the ringer for the last couple of years. And uh, it has been a, a hard road for us as a family. But I think we got this thing figured out. And as I started this journey, January the 15th, on spreading awareness to suicide uh, prevention and awareness, I, I wanted to make sure that I tap into the not not just 
what to do if it happens, but mm -hmm. the issues that are attached to suicide, you mm -hmm. know, talking about that depression, talking about that relationship, talking about those little bitty ankle biter situations mm -hmm. that make somebody spaz out to the point where they're like, I want to end it all. Right. So right. That's what I'm targeting because I believe that if we target the things leading up to the suicide, we'll be a little bit better off helping the individual conquer mm -hmm. or not even going down the road of suicide. But right. I am on an intentional journey to talk about the things that lead up to that point. You know, how do we get there? How do we get mm -hmm. to taking our own life? And mm -hmm. that's what I want to focus on moving forward. And I'm going to continue on this journey until God releases me from this assignment, because mm -hmm. I think it's beneficial for us to put the knowledge out. And I'm looking for more mm -hmm. people like you, BL, to help give some insight from a professional perspective on how to uh, tackle this thing, you know, mm -hmm. whether it's educating, whether it's training, whether it's motivating, whatever it is, I want to get after it because I believe mm -hmm. in educating people to have a better understanding. And once people have a better understanding, I think they have a better grasp on how to solve problems. Mm -hmm. Well, you're right. What you're doing, uh, you know, putting a voice to it, it takes away the stigma. Right. And so once you take away the stigma, you know, it's much easier for people to come forth and talk about those issues that would drive them through so far. Yes, absolutely. Putting a voice to it takes away the mm -hmm. stigma. Right. Remember that. That's good right there. So in recent polls, 16 percent of respondents, first responders or roughly 40 million American adults reported that someone they care for attempted or died by suicide with a gun. Addressing mm -hmm. firearm suicide is an essential element of any strategy to reduce gun violence in this country today. Given the unique lethality of firearms as a means of suicide, policies and practices that limit or disrupt access to firearms have shown to save lives. Now, this is a statistic, or trying to get this word out, statistic that um, was captured January of 2020. Two thirds of all gun deaths are by firearms. Well, mm -hmm. yeah, one half are suicides. One half of firearm deaths is suicide. You know that if if that doesn't rattle someone, I I don't mm -hmm. know what does. One half of all suicides is by firearm. Mm -hmm. So that means that. People are possessing, they're getting access to these firearms and they're doing whatever it is that they do with the firearm. And this this tells us that most firearm deaths are to the head. Mm -hmm. The majority of firearm suicides are by shooting themselves in the head. Mm -hmm. Americans should be aware of the prevalence of firearm suicide, how having access to guns increase the risk of suicide and steps that they can take to mitigate the risk. What do you think some of the steps to mitigate risk of firearm suicide are, BL? Well, I think one, the first thing is awareness. Uh, when, when people, again, when people have um, thoughts, thoughts of suicide, it needs to be addressed then. Um, there, <clears throat> Generally, <clears throat> somebody doesn't just wake up and say, oh, I think I'm going to commit suicide. There have been some problems. There have been some red flags that have gone on prior to the day that someone makes that decision to take their life. And I think that as, as a loved one, we need to pay attention to people. Um, when people. When people start, you know, saying, talking about finality, um, you know, man, um, you know, if I, if I die today, everything would be good. Um, and so, and so paying attention to those words, listening to people and then, and then seeking professional help. Again, the, uh, the national suicide prevention hotline is a, is a 24 hour a day, seven day a week, uh, hotline. Um, and you have to call that hotline, but, um, uh, with that, again, talking to those people who own guns, uh, you're not going to be able to say, hey, I'm going to take your handgun because that's going to be a fight. Uh, so you have to talk them down and um, maybe start with, hey, why don't we do this? Why don't we why don't we um, take the magazine out? Um, 
you know, clear the weapon and put it in a box and separate the ammo and the weapon. So that's a start. Um, and then if you feel like you need to put the weapon together, hey, give me a call. If you feel like, you know, you're not feeling well, you're feeling a little depressed, you're feeling down, give me a call. Um, and those type things. I think those are the steps that you take to uh, prevent those incidents. Uh, can can you can you one hundred percent prevent them? No. no. Uh, if somebody if somebody wants to get a hold of a firearm, they will. Absolutely. If they want to commit suicide, they will find a way to do so. Uh, but I think you have to listen and you have to pay attention to those signals uh, because because generally, if you think back to it, um, you know, if you think back to uh, someone who 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 may have. You know, if some of your listeners may have known someone who's committed suicide, if you think back to the conversations that led up to the actual suicide um, and you kind of replay, oh, man, you know, I can't believe I didn't catch that. Um, oh, you know, I, they did say that, you know. And so, you know, you, you have to you have to listen. And when and when you hear those trigger words or those trigger phrases, you have to you have to expound on that. You have to uh, investigate. Absolutely. And the worst thing we can do is assume that your strong friend or your strong family member is not going to take it that far. Right. Right. Do not assume that, please. Right. I I'm telling you from a place that I have been sitting in since January the 1st of 2020. Mm -hmm. Do not assume that because this person is so strong, you've known them for 20, 30, 40 years, mm -hmm. they can possibly want to take their own life oh they, it'll blow over um mm -hmm. i'm not gonna worry about that they'll never do nothing like that we can't count that out right. we can't discredit what they're saying we need to take what they're saying as face value mm -hmm. and we need to do whatever it is that we possibly can because mm -hmm. i'm not saying that we can save everybody or stop every right. suicide you can't possibly be with someone 100 of the day every single day of the year Mm -hmm. I understand that. But when you have that chance to interact with that person, a chance to bring awareness to that person, a chance to help prevent something from going too far, then do that. Be mm -hmm. a, a good citizen, a good Samaritan to at least talk to the person. Right. I know that we can't prevent everything from happening because there's no way we can be with someone all of the time. Mm -hmm. That's that's uh, next to impossible to do. OK, some mm -hmm. some people can be with people all day, every day. I don't know. I, yeah. I can't do that. <laughs> but there are some people out here that can. And if that's you, God bless you. God bless you. But as you lead your life and as you move and, you know, navigate your life, you're going to be out doing something. You may have to run to the store. You may have to go to work. I don't know. Go to the mm -hmm. gym. Who knows? But what I'm saying, if you ever right. get a chance to impact somebody's life and have a conversation with them at the least, then do that. Be open to at least doing that. Mm -hmm. This this article says that there is a popular misconception that suicide is inevitable, that suicidal ideations is a permanent condition. But most people who attempt suicide do not die unless they use a gun. I'm going to say that again. Most people who attempt suicide do not die unless they use a gun. Across all suicide attempts not involving a firearm, 4% will result in death. But for a gun suicide, those statistics are greatly flipped. Approximately 90%, 90% of all gun suicides or attempts end in death. That's high. Mm -hmm. That's high. That's very high. 90%. We went from 4% to 90%. 90. Yeah. That's very high. Very high. I, I don't know anyone personally that has survived a suicide attempt with a gun. I don't know anybody that survived. Mm -hmm. Now, I've, I've read some articles of some people that survived and they're having issues like they're either brain dead or the quality of life. Uh, they're having difficulties yeah. with life right now. You mm -hmm. know, they're not a hundred percent themselves. 
Mm -hmm. And taking a gun, firing it in the in the brain. Let's talk about that for a second. Do you, BL, have any knowledge of what the impact is of a person shooting themselves in the head has immediately on that person as after they commit that act? I have none. That that would be for a medical professional. I have none. I've seen it. Um, I've seen it as well. Yeah, but I I don't I don't know as far as what what goes on. I don't know. So that's going to be a task for me. I am going to try my best to get a um, a medical doctor professional on the show to talk about that because I think that that is something that we need to know. I want to educate mm -hmm. people on what happens when that that occurs i want people to know because it happened in my own family and so i want to take a deeper dive into that so be looking out for that show coming mm -hmm. soon bl what advice would you like to give to anyone that owns a firearm and they're currently suffering from a mental illness uh if you're suffering from a mental mental illness i i suggest that you seek professional help um uh, professional counseling, professional therapy. Again, the uh, National Suicide Prevention Hotline uh, is a very good resource. Um, and I and I would also hope that um, you know family members can can talk to uh, that person into um, you know uh, small steps, um, small steps to um, to relinquish the firearms. Uh, you know, first talk about you know taking you know, clearing the firearm. Then you talk about maybe locking the firearm away. Uh, then you talk about maybe taking that box and locking it in another box. Uh, and then you talk about maybe, well, maybe you don't really need it. Um, so I think those steps uh, would, would be my best advice. I, I think that's some great advice. Um, we have to just be more conscious about how we're handling firearms. And you know, mm -hmm. When, when you get ready to do whatever it is you're, you're prepared to do um, with your own life and you own a firearm, there may not be anybody around, you know, that can mm -hmm. put a stop to it. Right. What I'm asking you to do is, is to take a second to just pause, ponder, and pray. Mm -hmm. I'm just asking mm -hmm. you to just take a second to pause ponder and pray. And I want you to know that no matter what your situation looks like, homeless, loss of job, medical condition, bills due, um, car repossessed, uh, just lost a loved one, a relationship went south. You are a child of the most high God mm -hmm. and God loves you. God loves you. So if you think it is that bad, I'm asking you to please pause, ponder, and pray before you do anything else. Before you even make a move, just do those simple three things for me, please. I'm just asking if you're able to uh, look at this live or you catch the replay, the number to the suicide hotline is 1-800-273-8255. 1-800-273-8255 and it is also showing on the screen right now also if you have access to a computer you can go to www.lifeline.org.au www.lifeline.org.au and there are people ready to assist you um so don't hang up if you call stick it out let those people, those trained crisis prevention people help you, please right. give it a chance. If you, if you haven't done anything else, call the national suicide prevention hotline. Those people are trained and skilled in what they do. You're not going to get someone that does not know what they're talking about. And let me tell you this, the calls are confidential, but if they need to come assist you readily, they will do that as well. Okay. So just know this. It's open 24 hours a day, seven days a week. The line never closes. It's always open. There's someone always there to answer your call and help you. 
Crisis Prevention Team is ready. 1-800-273-8255. They're there to help you whatever you're going through. Like I said earlier, loss of job, homeless, substance abuse, mental health conditions. There's, If you're a veteran, they will help you as well. This number is open to anyone. Everyone. Anyone. It does not matter who you are, what walk of life you came from. It does not matter. Your nationality, your race, none of that matters. You are a human being above anything else. Okay? So this hotline, one 800 273-8255 is here to help. Please call the number. BL, as an author, how have you recently impacted people, citizens of America, children, adults? Tell us about that and tell us about your books. Well, what I do is uh, I go out to community events, um, especially any, any event that um, I know kids will be present. Uh, and I take this book. Uh, it's called Brownie Bear Teaches Gun Safety. Mm -hmm. um, like I said, it's a it's a book that talks about three kids on their way to school and they find a firearm uh, and the bear uh, tells them about the uh, dangers of firearms, uh, what they should do, you know, if it happened again. I, um, I, I sometimes I when I go to these places, depending on how how many books I've sold, I can give away uh, quite a few. Um, I, um, I do that. I, um, I also have a, a book that, um, that I also, uh, market It's called rules of engagement, mending citizen and police interactions. This book talks about, yeah, this book talks about interacting with police officers. Um, I've talked to a lot of, uh, young people about this book. Um, you talk about interacting with the police. Uh, it's important that you that you know how to play the game. Uh, we've seen a lot of situations where um, you know it's not a positive outcome for citizens um, when dealing with the police. And I think it's important that in any game you have to know the rules. Um, when you talk about, well, I know my rights. I think some of us know our rights, but we don't actually know how to apply those rights. Um, I think it's important to know why the police do what they do. Um, and um, what gives them the authority to do that. And so all of that information is in the book. Uh, what to do when you, know, you don't have a positive uh, interaction. And that is complain. Um, we do a lot of complaining to each other, but we never take the opportunity to write a written complaint. Those complaints go into an officer's uh, file. And uh, believe it or not, those, those things help. When, you, when officers come up for promotion, those things are looked at. Um, and so rather than complaining to, you know, our sister, our brother, our aunt, you know, a friend, write a written complaint. Um, I give you an example. I give you an example of a situation. Uh, a lot of times uh, what I tell people is limit your time with that officer. Uh, for example, I had a, a situation where a lady told me, she said, well, my daughter got pulled over by the police. Um, she cracked her window. The police officer kept asking her to let the window down. And so she said, well, should she have let the window down? I was like, yeah. I mean, why would you crack the window? Right. You know? And so it's just, it's just what it does is it antagonizes the police officer, you know? And, and at that point, you're not going to win. You, you can't win. Uh, so what I tell people is, of course, you don't want to be disrespected, but limit your time with those police officers. Um, the police officer's job is to, or what they should do is to tell you why you're being pulled over. Uh, but if they don't, that's okay. That's okay. All right. They're going to either come back with a warning or a citation. Once you get the citation, you'll know exactly why you're being pulled over. It's not necessary to go back and forth with the officer. And I understand, you know, sometimes people are like, well, they disrespected me. You know, they should have told me why they were being pulled over. Yeah, you're right. But at the same time, limit your time, time with the with police that, officer. Right. Because the longer that interaction goes, the more likely it is going to become negative. Mm. Um, and so I think, I think that's huge. Um, I think it's, it's great to know your rights and those, those rights, especially the fourth amendment, uh, your right against unreasonable search and seizure it talks about that, that a lot in the book. There's a whole chapter that's, that's dedicated to search and seizure. Um, you know, when an officer can search you, when they can search your car, 
Um, I give you an example of that. Uh, in Georgia, marijuana is not is not legal. So you know, if an officer uh, smells marijuana coming from your car, they can search your car. That smell of marijuana is probable cause to search your car. So how many people in Georgia would know that? Nobody, unless the office, unless some officer tells them, you right. know, so, and so there's a lot of people in Georgia that think that marijuana is legal because it's legal in Colorado, it's legal in California, it's legal in DC. Right. So it must be legal in Georgia <laughs> um, and, it's, and it's not. And so police officers can still use that. Uh, I talk, I talk a lot about how not to get stopped by the police. Um, and I talk about, you know, my issues with the police. I'm, I, I speed, you know, and I don't mind saying it, but if I get stopped by the police, I don't pull a badge out. If I'm wrong, I'm wrong. I'm gonna pull over. If I get a ticket, I get a ticket. Um, but, but what I do to not get pulled over is I watch the cars in front of me. Mm -hmm. And if the cars in front of me start breaking, guess what I'm going to do? Slow down. Um, you know, a lot of people, they get stopped um, for speeding and they say, well, no, 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 I, I, I was going 30 when I saw you. But the officer picked you up like 1,400 yards or something like that. You know, those lasers go pretty far. So it's like before you even see the officer, they've already tagged you. And so even though when you see them, you slow down, they got you way back then. Right. You know, and so just things like that, um, you know, you can fight it in court. But again, limit your time with the officer. Don't fight it on the side of the road. Right. You know? Yeah. That's good information. That's, that's great you. information, as a matter of fact. <laughs> Tell, hold up the cover of the book again. Are these books all available on Amazon? These books are available on, on Amazon and they're available at my website. Uh, my website is the Justice Academy. Uh, my, I'm sorry, myjusticeacademy.com. MyJusticeAcademy.com. Yes. And also on Amazon. Okay, I got you. Any final words for the audience, Bill? Uh, my final words would be this. Um, I know you, you stressed a lot about the uh, National Suicide Prevention Hotline. I think that's important. Um, I think as loved ones, we don't want to try to tackle those problems uh, alone. Uh, we need to make sure that we get some professional uh, counseling for our for our loved ones. And two, um, gun safety is important. It's important for everyone in the home. Um, even even the, uh, even a two year old, uh, you'd be surprised. A two year old can pull a trigger on a handgun. Uh, so it's important that that you at least talk um, to your kids about it. If you don't know what to say, that's why I wrote this book. Um, it's to it's to teach parents. Also, parents. Um, Talk to your kids if you don't know what to say. Read them the book. Um, uh, dealing with the police, limit your time. Um, I, I can't stress that enough. Limit your time with with police officers. You know, I, I think that's pivotal right there. Limit your time with police officers if you have an interaction with a police officer. And you know, I, I remember my father always told me. He said, "Keep your um, license and registration in your son bag." <laughs> Yeah. So you yeah. could just reach up and just give mm -hmm. it right to them. I'm like, right. but yeah, hey, you know, I keep my driver's license in my purse. <laughs> right, right. But but you know what? I'll say this. I'll say this, and this is what I do. I um, I you know when you're about to get pulled over, mm -hmm. I mean, or you should. You know, like I said, I speed. So it's, once I see the police officer, I just pull over. Right. You don't have to come. You don't have to chase me. I right. know. I know you. I know what I was doing. I just pull over. And if if you're not if you're not the one. They gonna keep going past you. Then you pull out, and you say, and you thank God, and you keep it moving. You know, <laughs> but, but once I pull over, I get my license out. Then mm -hmm. uh, once I once I because then once they get there, I have it. I don't want to reach for anything. I, I don't want I don't want them to be alarmed. I don't put my hands up. Mm -hmm. I don't put them on on the steering wheel. I just keep them in my lap. Yeah, because and I tell kids they you know when we do we do scenarios. And so when when they when they get stopped, they always want to put their hands up. And I said, "Well, what happens when you get tired? Well, I'm gonna put them down. Now I'm alone. <laughs> you, you know. So so I'm like, just relax. Right. Just relax. You know, the phone rings. I I I probably leave the phone where it is. Yeah. Um, you know, a lot, a lot of people want to record. 
get your recording, get started before they get there. Yeah. Because once, you know, once you once they get there, you you don't you don't want to put them on. You want them to be at ease. Mm -hmm. um, and I and I don't think that's. I don't think that's you know being a sellout. I think that's just like I want to go home. Right. <laughs> you know, I want to go home. You know, some people yeah. are panicking. And, and the, right. Right. Or panicking. Right. And the, and the police officer wants to go home. They don't know who they're stopping. Right. You know, as a police officer, I don't know who I'm stopping. Mm -hmm. I don't know who you are. You could have just murdered 12 people. I don't know. Right. Yeah. And so my job every time I go to work is to go home the same way I went to, I came to work. And so you have to understand that. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Well, tell the listening audience how to reach you, BL, if they want to reach out to you. I know you, I listed your website as well as your books are available on Amazon. But is there anything else you would like to give us as far as how to reach you? If they want to know anything else about you. You can reach out to my uh, my Facebook page. Uh, it's My Justice Academy. At, I'm sorry, at My Justice Academy. And uh, Twitter um, is at Justice Academy 2. And um, my Instagram is Brownie Bear 1913 Twitter is at Justice Academy 2. Yes. And I'm working on that whole branding thing, you know? Okay. To get everything the same. <laughs> hey, it takes time. It takes yeah, time. It's true that. True that. Definitely. Yeah. I want to thank the listening audience for tuning in with us on today. And I want to leave you with this final uh, statistic based on um, the suicide prevention uh, hotline. It says over 80% of child firearm suicides involved a gun belonging to a family member. Encouraging the secure storage of firearms in the home to prevent access by children and other unauthorized users. Secure firearm storage can help mitigate the risk of firearm suicide, especially for children and young adults. Approximately 4.6 million American children live in households with at least one loaded firearm. Mm -hmm. It's also unlocked. When American children die by firearm suicide, over 80% use a gun belonging to a family member. I want you all to remember that if you can be a part of the prevention, then do just that. Thank you all for tuning in. My name is Chandra Nicole Gore, and I am a Lens of Faith. God bless.